What's up guys, it's Ed from TechSource and in this video we're going to be comparing AMD's new RX 500 series graphics cards against their direct competition, the GTX 1050 Ti and the 1060. The RX 500 series are essentially AMD's refined second generation graphics cards that run on the Polaris architecture and is designed specifically for system upgrades. So I have the RX 580 which is aimed for a smooth 1440p gaming in high settings and it's capable of handling VR too. Then we got the RX 570 which is aimed at maximum 1080p gaming and they're basically claiming that you'll achieve well over 60 FPS in ultra settings in most AAA titles but obviously we will verify if this is accurate from our benchmarks. There's also the RX 560 and the 550 which I don't have on hand but if you guys are interested in a comparison between these two cards as well let me know in the comment section and I'll go ahead and pick them up for you. I'm also going to be doing another top 5 GPUs under $200 so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss out. So the RX 560 is kind of like an upgrade card. It's great for those of you who have a very old GPU that can't quite run games in 1080p. It starts at only $99 and it can basically get you over 60 FPS in most games, although you might have to play around with the settings a bit. I don't think you can play uh, most games in 1080p maxed out with this card. And finally, the cheapest of the RX 500 series is the RX 550 coming in at just 79 bucks. And this card is essentially competing against Intel's integrated graphics processor. It's able to run games over 60 FPS, but only on less intensive games like CSGO, Overwatch, and Rocket League. It's also a great GPU for a 4K home theater system, mainly because of its low profile design. So here is the entire lineup of the RX 500 series and their respective prices. The old feature FreeSync technology, so if you own a FreeSync monitor already, then you can definitely take advantage of that, as well as optimization for DirectX 12 and Vulkan Gaming. Oh, and also H.265 4K encoding. This is the test bed that I used for all the benchmarks and also decided to add in the 1% and 0.1% lows along with the average FPS since a lot of you guys keep asking me to do that. Also guys, just to be clear, I am benchmarking the board partner versions of the RX 500 lineup that you see in this video. So when I say RX 580, I'm actually referring to the Sapphire RX 580 and when I say RX 570, I'm referring to the Aura's RX 570, just to be clear. So before we get into the gaming benchmarks, let's take a quick look at the Firestrike benchmark scores to kind of give you guys an overview of the performance of these cards. And I even threw in some GPUs from the RX 400 lineup as well. We can definitely see a noticeable difference from the last generation GPUs. Not a huge difference though, but just enough to persuade you guys to go with their new RX 500 cards instead of the RX 400, since the prices didn't even change. It just doesn't make sense going with the older generation at this point, unless AMD decides to drop their prices. Taking a look at temps, we can see that the RX 570 is the hottest card during full load, followed closely by the RX 580. And with that said, here are the rest of the gaming benchmarks. So the GPU that pushed the most frames was the Gigabyte GTX 1060 G1 Gaming 6 Gigabyte variant with a total of 608 frames in HD and 470 in Quad HD. The runner up is the RX 580 which isn't that far behind and then in third place is the RX 570 but which card gives you the best bang for your buck? 
Well, for both 1080p and 1440p gaming, the RX 570 gives you the best value. Almost 3 frames per dollar for HD and 2.25 frames for 1440p. Surprisingly, the RX 580 gives you the worst value, probably because the price of the GPU is way higher than it should be. It's claimed a limited edition RX 580 from Sapphire, and because of that stupid title, I'm guessing that's why they priced it a bit higher. If you look at other RX 580 prices, they actually start at just $220 for the 8GB variant. So hypothetically, if I use the actual normal price instead of the ridiculous $275 price tag, we get a score of 2.61 frames on the dollar, which still doesn't beat the RX 570 from Auras, nor does it beat the Gigabyte GTX 1060 in value. So with that said, the Aorus RX 570 gives you the best bang for your buck out of all these GPUs featured in this video. So if you're shopping around for your next graphics card and don't want to spend more than $200, then this card should definitely be on your list. If you're looking for bang for your buck, that is. Also guys, do keep in mind that other board partners have these cards starting at just $170, and I'll drop a link to all the cards featured in this video down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like. It does take me a long time to make these videos. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.